both and, either, rather than either or. I wouldn't say that decisions are always based on numbers. We certainly see plenty of cases where they're not, and sometimes people do things we might say are irrational because, in fact, the numbers don't support those decisions. But I think the important point here is that it's both. We don't have to diminish the importance of values like beauty or cultural preservation or linguistic, you know, linguistic diversity. I mean, there are many kinds of interesting issues and values that can't be adequately quantified. Um, and as I always like to say, just because something can't be counted doesn't mean it doesn't count. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so it's so I think of it as both and. and Sort of, yeah. Um, so I'm a part of an NGO in the United States called Protect Our Winters, and this is an organization that was founded by Jeremy Jones, who's a professional snowboarder. And you know what we like to say in Protect Our Winters is we are motivated to be concerned about climate change because we love winter, because we love snow, because we love winter sports, and it's a passion. And people who are into winter sports. I don't have this culture here in Taiwan, but it's a kind of sub subculture in the United States of people who are crazy <laughs> about snow. I mean, some of these people are just absolutely crazy, um, and they're crazy about their gear, and they're crazy about getting out, and they count the centimeters of snow. Um, it's a passion. It's something people love. There's a huge amount of fun associated with winter sports, but it is also a $2 billion a year industry. And 20 million Americans participate in winter sports. 20 million. So if you think about translating those 20 million people into a political constituency, suddenly this becomes a very potentially powerful political constituency and a constituency of people who generally vote, people who have disposable income, and many of whom are Republicans. So <laughs> suddenly you know, it sort of shifts the political valence a little bit. Um, and there are people for whom we can talk about the fun of winter sports, and that moves them in a way that no discussion of money or numbers or parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere will. But there are other people for whom no discussion of fun will move them, but the discussion of the $2 billion industry, $2 billion a year industry that is at risk, directly at risk because of climate change, for many people that's a powerful argument. So what we try to do is to put them together and say we're protecting fun, we're protecting something we love, and there's $2 billion of industry at stake every year as well. Okay. To answer your question about how Sandy could do so much damage, the short answer is that New York real estate is worth a huge amount of money. Okay? <laughs> and some of us were talking about this earlier. Um, coastal real estate is very, very valuable real estate. And one of the reasons the United States is actually more at risk than many people realize is because we have so much tremendously valuable real estate at sea level, and particularly the threat from storm intensification. Hurricanes in the Atlantic region typically run up the northeast coast, and they hit major cities. And, if they get, and in the past, typically most hurricanes have weakened by the time they reach Philadelphia, New York, Washington, Boston, that what we call the Amtrak corridor, that's <laughs> the train line that runs there. Um, but if the hurricanes are strong enough to reach New York or Boston or Washington, you see the potential uh, for billions of dollars in damage to real estate is enormous. And we saw that happen in Hurricane Sandy. On British Columbia, uh, the, ta the tax has only been implemented for a sh relatively short period now. So I don't know. There are some studies about how it's playing out. I don't know how much good data they have yet. But there's a group in Vancouver, the Pacific, you may know them, uh, Pacific Northwest Center for Climate Solutions. Uh, and they have been doing research on the carbon tax and its economic costs and benefits. So that's something to follow up on.